Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how to find an optimal value of k in k-means clustering algorithm using elbow and silhouette method. First, we will try to understand what is a k-means clustering algorithm. K-means clustering is a distance-based unsupervised clustering algorithm where the data points that are close to each other are grouped into a different groups or you can say that the clusters. I have solved many examples on k-means clustering algorithm. The link for those videos is given in the description below. Now we will understand what are the disadvantages of k-means clustering algorithm. The very first disadvantage is whenever we want to apply k-means clustering algorithm on the given data set, we need to identify the centroids that is called as the initial centroids here. Based on the number of clusters, we need to identify that many number of centroids and then we need to continue with the k-means clustering algorithm. So identifying initial centroid is a big issue in k-means clustering algorithm. I have discussed this particular issue in another video. The link for that video is given in the description below. The second disadvantage of k-means clustering algorithm is that we need to specify the number of clusters to be formed for the given data set in advance. Given a data set, we need to specify this particular value of k. That is also very difficult because given the data set, we cannot say what should be the optimal value of k. Like the value of k should be equal to 1, 2 or 3. It is very difficult to say. So this is the second disadvantage of a k-means clustering algorithm. In this video, I will discuss how can we identify an optimal value of k for the given data set. That can be done with the help of uh, two methods. The first method is called as elbow method. Second one is called as silhouette method here. First, we will discuss elbow method to identify optimal number of clusters for the given data set. The first step in elbow method is we need to apply the k-means clustering algorithm on a given data set and form the clusters for different values of k. That means we need to consider the value of k is equal to 1 and then we need to form the clusters. Similarly, we need to consider the value of k is equal to 2. Again, we need to form the clusters. The same thing we have to repeat it for different values of k here. Once you form the clusters for different values of k, the next step is to calculate within cluster sum of squares for each value of that particular k that is known as WCSS. Now the question comes in front of us is how to calculate this WCSS. Let us consider uh, this is the data set given to us. We have formed the three clusters that is the value of k is equal to 3 in this case. So this has to be repeated for all possible values of k. I am just trying to explain it for one value of k here. If the value of k is equal to 3, we will get three clusters here. Now we will try to understand how to calculate this WCSS here. WCSS is equal to summation of ck, summation of di in ci, distance of di comma ck bracket square here. So what is the meaning of this one is? For each cluster, within that particular cluster, we will be having multiple number of data points. So what we need to do? From each of those particular data points, we need to calculate the distance to the centroid here. You can notice in this case, this uh, dot or the thing which is written in the red color, that is the centroid here. So from each of these particular data points to this particular red dot or the centroid, we need to calculate the distance here. And we need to take the square of that particular distance. So that is nothing but the summation of this particular term. The same thing has to be repeated to the second one. The same thing should be repeated for the third cluster. And we need to add all those things. We will get WCSS for the given value of this particular k here. The same thing has to be repeated for all possible values of k. Once you calculate this particular WCSS, the next step is to plot the curve of WCSS against the number of clusters here. So that can be shown something like this. We have plotted this particular curve with uh, WCSS on y-axis, number of clusters on x-axis over here. If you notice this particular curve, when the value of k is equal to 1, the WCSS is very high. As and when the number of clusters increases, the value of WCSS goes on decreases. At a particular point of time, we will get something called as elbow shape here. So that is the approximate value of the k in this particular case. So if you look at this particular example, in this case, the value of k is equal to 3. So we can say that that is the approximate number of clusters for this particular given data set over here. Now, this is how actually we can apply the elbow method on the given data set and then we can identify an optimal value of k for the k-means clustering algorithm. 
Now coming back to the second method that is known as Silote method. In this case, uh, first we will try to understand what is Silote coefficient or Silote score. Silote coefficient or Silote score is a measure of how similar data point is within the cluster compared to other clusters here. So this is what the meaning of uh, Silote coefficient. Now what we need to do here is again for different possible values of k like we need to take the value of k is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on. We need to calculate this Silote coefficient here. Once you calculate this particular Silote coefficient, again we need to plot Silote coefficient again possible values of k and then we will select the best value of k over here. But before you plot the Silote coefficient against this particular k, we need to know how to calculate this particular Silote coefficient. To calculate the Silote coefficient for a particular data point in a given cluster, we use this particular equation. That is, S of i is always equal to b of i minus a of i divided by maximum of a of i comma b of i in this case. Now the question is what is s of i? s of i is the Silote coefficient of the data point i. In this case i is one data point in that particular cluster. Now what is a of i? a of i is the average distance between the data point i to all other data points in the cluster. b of i is the average distance of this particular data point again i to all other clusters to which i does not belong to. I will take a simple example to explain these particular a of i and b of i. Let us consider this example. In this case we have formed two clusters here. This is the one cluster and this is the another cluster. I want to calculate the a of i for this particular data point which is marked with the blue color here. What we need to do here is we need to calculate the distance to each and every data point which is present in this particular cluster. So we will get 1, 2, 3 and 4 distances. So what we need to do is we need to take the average distance here so that we will get the a of i here. Similarly, if you want to calculate the value of b of i, again this is a of uh, this is what the data point under consideration. We need to calculate the distance from this particular data point to all other data points in other clusters. That is this particular data point belongs to this cluster. We need to calculate the distance to all the data points which are present in another clusters here. Now once you calculate this particular distance, we need to take the average distance over here. So once you calculate the average distance, this will become your bi. Now what we do here is we will put those particular values in this particular equation so that we will get this particular si here. So si is the Silote coefficient for the data point i in this particular case. Now the same thing has to be repeated to each and every data point uh, present in this particular uh, clusters here. So I have solved it for one data point. The same thing should be done for all other data points here. So once you calculate it, we need to take the finally the average Silote coefficient. So once you calculate this particular average Silote coefficient, now we need to draw this particular average Silote coefficient against the possible values of k here. The final question comes in front of us is what is the optimal value uh, I need to select from this particular curve. For that reason, you need to remember few points here. The value of Silote coefficient will be always in the range of uh, minus 1 to plus 1. If the Silote coefficient is equal to 1, that means uh, the data point is correctly placed in a particular cluster. If it is equal to minus 1, it is wrongly placed in a particular cluster. If the Silote coefficient is equal to 0, the meaning is the clusters are overlapping in this case. Now, what we need to do here is we need to select a value of k where we are getting the maximum Silote score here. If you look at this particular curve, for the value k is equal to 3, we are getting the maximum Silote score. So we can say that 3 is an optimal value for k for the given data set in k-means clustering algorithm. This is how you can apply the Silote method to find the optimal value for k for the given data set. In this video, I have discussed what is a k-means clustering algorithm, what are the disadvantages of a k-means clustering algorithm and how can we get the optimal value of k for the given data set. I hope you understood the concept. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.